Uh, could growing fears over coronavirus lead to more consumers staying home? And potentially this could be good for business, ordering in. We're going to talk about that and a lot more that's taking place in this sector. Joining us right now for first on CNBC interview is Grubhub CEO Matt Baloney. Good morning to you. Good morning. Uh, let's start with coronavirus because everybody's talking about it and trying to understand what it would mean. And there is a uh, conversation about certain types of companies that actually oddly enough, could benefit in terms of people staying home and trying to get their food brought to them? We'll see. Uh, I have no idea. I mean, coronavirus is a scary situation, and I believe the scientists. When they're right. saying, talking about pandemics, I'm wiping down my airplane seat every time I fly. It hasn't impacted our business yet in the States. I mean, it hasn't really hit it that hard right. as of yet, but we are very much paying attention on a local level as to what could possibly happen and how it could impact our business. Do we have a problem with supply of drivers? Uh, do we have a problem with supply of restaurants? Do we have a, a problem with demand? Like, how will it impact right. the different areas of our business? But no matter what happens, we're going to be all over. To the extent that you have studied what's taken place in China and similar businesses like yours there, right. how has it worked? I, I, it is very hard to draw analogies from China to the U.S. because it's a completely different market. The density is, <laughs> is outrageous, right. whereas in, in the States... It's a different uh, system of delivery and restaurants. So I, I would be very cautious to draw parallels between what's happening over there right now in a crisis situation and how that would impact the states. But we are paying attention on the ground to see how it's going to impact our restaurants, our diners. Is there anything you're doing differently today? Currently? In terms of preparation beyond sort of studying and looking at some of the numbers and things, what you would do? We in got, we got all of our sensors up. We are paying a lot of attention, but we're not right. doing but there's anything no, differently. I didn't know if there's anything to do. To, there's nothing to do right now right. because the cases haven't, I mean, we're not at an epidemic in the U.S. yet. Right. Um, would you imagine that prices would go up during this period? I, see, I have no idea. It, the prices would be a function of supply and demand, depending on the right. food. Well, the I, would think, I would think you'd have two issues. You'd have the restaurants in terms of they might want to raise their prices because they might need to actually incentivize people to uh, incentivize their staff to even show up. That could be an issue, potentially. And you might have to actually try to incentivize drivers and delivery people to show up in the same way that surge pricing takes place uh, on an Uber or, or something like that, when you actually need, uh, need people to, to be in a particular area. Sure. We don't have surge pricing right I now. I know you don't. But, but absolutely. Uh, I have no idea how right. an epidemic is going to impact our business and how it impacts our pricing, right. but that's exactly what we're paying attention to. If we don't have right. enough drivers, right. we have to figure out how do we get more drivers on the street. Um, let's talk more broadly about the, the business that you're in, but also your specific business. If you look at the chart that is up right now, you can see what happened in November. Tell us everything that's happened since then. Absolutely. So uh, in our uh, third quarter, we issued a shareholder letter right. that reoriented the industry yep. around the new reality. Mm -hmm. I mean, what was happening was there's too many competitors right. spending too much money, losing too much money. And so we pivoted our strategy to be aggressive on supply and aggressive on, on incentives. And that's exactly what we're doing today with the launch of our Grubhub Plus membership program. It is, it is a, an order of magnitude more exciting than any other program that's out there. <clears throat> the, the free delivery is table stakes. That's, that's what it is right now. And we have 10% cash back on top of that, which is, right. which is really incredible. What has to happen to the rest of the, the, the business? And I should note, by the way, the head of uh, Uber Eats just stepped down yesterday. Sure. Yeah, I saw that. Jason, uh, Jason stepped down and a, and a new guy uh, yep. uh, came in. But what has to happen to the rest of the business? What, has to, what happens it has to happen to the rest of the industry? What to, what's going to happen to DoorDash? What's going to happen to Postmates? Do, do so you have to buy You guys are beating them? each other up right now, and you're offering prices that are probably too low to try. None and of this makes sense unless a couple of these guys consolidate, including probably, right? Potentially. Now, what, we're in a position of strength because we're the only profitable uh, company in the industry. Mm -hmm. And so we're able to lean into that profitability with incredible rewards and give 10% cash back and double the donations. And that's part of the membership program. And is that an effort to put Postmates and DoorDash out of business? I, I can't impact their viability as a business, but I can absolutely impact my competitiveness. And so what we're doing is we're leaning into our profits and stealing share at a time when everyone else in the industry is fighting 
to find break even. They're trying to battle back. That's my question, though. Are you, you when you say leaning into your profits, yeah. meaning you're willing to take lesser profits to try and consolidate market coverage? To, sure. Yeah. Well, that's the chart we just looked at. The stock drop is because we said we're taking our profitability from where it could be near 200 million a year down to 100 million a year, For and that. we're taking those extra profits and we're we're using them hyper competitively, right. and we're trying to steal share because I talked a lot about promiscuous diners. Yeah. Diners, I love check that phrase, out other way. platforms. We're going to have to run, but are you, were you looking to buy yeah. one of these other companies? Am I looking to buy it? Yes. We bought 10 companies in the past 10 <laughs> years. Right. This is part of our growth strategy. So I'm very opportunistic this year about what we could do. I'm just trying to be as competitive Which as possible. Which one do you worry about the most? Which one? I think there are a lot of companies losing a lot of money, right. and the industry is ripe for consolidation.